everyone, I'm Drea Renee, and you're watching Spotlight Series. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I'm so excited to be here. We have some awesome guests. If you guys haven't already, make sure you hit like and subscribe as we'll be having weekly content and lots of videos, and we want to make sure you're the first to get it. So hit that like and hit that subscribe, and let's get into it. Today, joining me, we have some amazing women here. We have Olia Aparina, I want to make sure I get that right, Anya Bay, and Helena Hutchins. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm so happy to have you here. So glad to have you joining us. You guys are in the film industry. They do it all. They're writing, they're directing, they're producing. So I want to know about your journeys and how you got into filmmaking. We'll start with you, Anya. Oh, all right. So I started years ago as an actress and model uh, in San Francisco. And oh, wow. that's where I used to live for five years. And uh, eventually I moved to L.A. because this is where you go right. if you're serious about it. And I just transi transi transitioned <laughs> into the production world. And I always knew I wanted to make my own films and tell my own stories, but I didn't quite know how. Like, I knew the in front of the camera angle, but I didn't know behind the camera. And then I met Olya, which was like oh, five yeah, or six. Oh, yeah, you guys met. We met because uh, both of us were modeling for a oh, French, words. thank you, <laughs> for a um, French designer. And um, it was in Vegas. It was a big show in Vegas. Oh, no way. Yeah. yeah, but both of us lived in LA at the time, and uh, she was already, she already started producing and directing, and uh, and I wanted to try, so she sort of you know brought me with her to one of her projects, and I really loved it. So I started to learn how to do production coordination and later production managing, and it just it somehow was so easy and natural for me that within like a couple of years, I already made like 10 films, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's well, amazing. films, you know, commercials, yeah. short feature, like you call it, like different, different things. But, um, um, so in 2006, 17, we made our first feature film snowbound, yeah. um, which was an incredible challenge to say the least. And, um, we um, did it. We did it, yeah. and um, we finished it. We sold it, even, and it's it's out there on the platforms. And um, later, I just somehow started writing. I again, it was I think 2018. So I've been writing for like two, three years. Tops. Oh wow! Yeah, but this is like my main focus, and it just I feel like it's a calling, really. Um, did you felt this like since you were a little girl? In Russia, did this well, I knew later? again, like show business and like entertainment and performance was always very natural. Like when I was in Russia, I was a I was a gymnast and a dancer, and I was like on stage ever since I was five. So for me, being on stage was like right. yeah. That's what you're supposed to be doing. Yes. Yeah. And I love the stories. I was always fascinated with, you know, films because, specifically films, because I feel like you can make a difference and you can really, you know, influence millions of people just by making one little piece. And I think if I can, you know, make somebody's life better or like, like something. Absolutely. Something that I can contribute, it makes me happy. So that's how I thought, you know, uh, theater is good. I love theater, but I think film is more where, you know, I like I knew it ever since I was a kid. I just didn't know what exactly am I going to be doing in film right. because there's so many different things. And um, so um, and two and a half years ago, I wrote I Am Normal, which was my first uh, screenplay. Uh, it's a short film. And um, we made it, and it turned out to be really well. Now it's going through many film festivals, yeah, including, I saw that. And you, including like the big ones like Cinequest. Uh, we're showing with them next month, uh, end of March, and uh, it's just like you know one thing led to another, and I started writing more, and I've written a few TV pilots. And I've written I'm Normal Feature now. and Oh, nice. Yes, which we're also planning to make. But, you know, I can tell you more about it. Um, so, yeah, it's just I'm sort of like going with the creative flow. And who knows what I'm going to be doing next year. I don't know. I just know I'm at the right place and things are happening. So Yeah, and it's amazing. I Am Normal, you guys, you have to go see it. It looks so, so good. So, so good. Thank you. So, oh, yeah, talk to me about your journey into filmmaking. Um, so I guess it started in art school back in Russia. Oh, yeah. Uh, where I studied for about six years. And then I moved to the U.S. Uh, after I got my bachelor's in Mandarin Chinese, actually. No. It was nothing to Wait. do with film. Are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Do you speak I, I Yes, I, I, like, I, I was good at that. And I went to China and studied there. 
Uh, but eventually I came here and I didn't know what I want. I knew I wanted to be in entertainment. Mm -hmm. So I went to UCLA and I took a few acting classes. Okay, so you have taken some acting classes. Yes, but I hated them. Oh, you're not <laughs> in front of the camera person. No. Okay. Okay. I'm like, oh my God, this is terrible. But the next Anya's door... Like, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Girl. Yeah, okay. So, but ne the next door, they were teaching the fundamentals of directing. Uh, it was a lecture. And I just sneaked in and I just sat down and I was listening to it. And it was fascinating. I was like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. And I ended up taking the whole certificate. And actually, that's where I met Helena. Oh, mm -hmm. She you was like in the one, class. one of it. my first filmmaker friends in the U.S. Like, we've been, we've known each other for 10 years now. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. I love that. Right. And so after that, um, I was asking people around, like, what's the best film school? Because I know UCLA Extension is yeah. great. It's a good start when you don't know anything at all. Um, they told me USC for masters, but... It's like the best, but you'll never get in. Uh, who um, told you that? <laughs> like people kept saying that it's really hard to get in. Yeah. And um, I got in. Of course you did. And it's funny because they had one Russian ahead of me, a year ahead of me, and one Russian a year behind me. Right. I'm like, so you only let like one Russian <laughs> per year? <laughs> exactly. That Russian is going to be me. <laughs> yeah, I'm it. like, okay, I'm taking the spot. It's <laughs> fine. Um, yeah, but it was a great experience because they taught us studio production, like the studio level production. And we started Monday to Friday and on weekends we were shooting. And right out when I left USC, um, I got the producing job on the feature film, like right away. Right away. Oh, you were lucky. Like, then. Happy, uh, helping my friend. I mean, it was a low budget production. It was like yeah. 30 locations. Oh my gosh. It mm -hmm. was action. It was action comedy. We had like ambulance, police cars in downtown, like explosions, were you just, like, loving planes. All of it? I'm like, wow, this is crazy. I'm doing everything that I haven't learned at school at all. <laughs> I know. You, sometimes you just have to be like thrown in, you know, like they tell you, right. you just have to go do it. Like, they taught me the studio stuff, and now I have to survive an indie world, and this is completely different. Right. And that's how I started, and then uh, I met Anya, and I started teaching her producing, and we uh, opened our production company together. We wrote a feature film, uh, screenplay, our first one, and then we shot a short film. And then we shot a feature film. You guys just like <laughs> took off. Yeah. Life's too short, girl. <laughs> Gotta make it happen, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we yeah. took it to Cannes Film Festival. We screened it there. So we cool. got our distributor. And now it's worldwide. It's like, okay, this is happening. <laughs> How does that make you guys feel? Like you like had your intentions. It's happening. Like what does that feel like for you? Empowering for me. Yeah. Everything is possible. Everything is very overwhelming and hard. But you just, you have to, you know, nobody's going to do it for you. That's how yeah. I feel. And Helena, talk to me about your journey in filmmaking and how you guys all interact and get to know each other. <laughs> As Ole mentioned, we met at UCLA Extension when I just moved to Los Angeles and I was just trying to figure out my way uh, here. But I started a little bit earlier uh, in Ukraine. I worked for, with a British uh, production company, news agency, and we did uh, feature documentaries for BBC and Discovery channel before I moved to New York City. And in New York City, I really took on photography and fashion photography. Oh, I cool. Loved it a lot. Um, and just wanted to make art films, actually. Just something really big scale, beautiful art house cinema. You know, I was inspired. And uh, when I moved to Los Angeles, I tried to figure out like what the next step would be. Where do you start when you yeah. don't know anybody? Yeah. <laughs> Where do you begin? And I went to UCLA Extension just to the just to get my feet wet, you know, and I met Ole and we started making short films. And I realized that even though I was in directing certificate program, yeah. uh, I love shooting. I shot like 15 shorts there. Oh my so I kept shooting and uh, I thought that's probably my calling because that that's a visual medium that I was really attracted yeah. to. And lighting was my favorite thing. I started working at a lighting company just to improve my, my skills. Um, and that led to me going to the best institution for my profession that I consider. I uh, went to AFI for cinematography, oh, yeah, yeah. did MFA in cinematography while Ole was doing UC, uh, USC yeah, school. You guys are <laughs> big <laughs> so, yeah, But we kept working even after that. And for you, did you always know this is what you wanted to do, like, early on? Not really, you know. Okay, like, I was kinda... trying to figure it out, you know, what, yeah. what you would like to do. I, it's my third degree, so. <laughs> well, I think cinematography yeah. is so beautiful to be able to, like, know how, like, what fits in the frame. I think that's a, such a beautiful talent to have. 
Yeah, it's a passion for sure. Yeah. yeah. Once you get the bug, you can't get out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys all met. Was it just like instantaneous fast friends or like how, how was the dynamic when you guys all met? Oh, we didn't like each other at first. I still don't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean at first? I'm not sure about this at first thing. <laughs> I know because you know sometimes you we're meet people just, and just like you're like mm, I don't know. well and no then, we had fun together but we're very different her and I we have completely different personalities different you know level of energy I'm more like skills. mellow and like calm and- <laughs> I'm not <laughs> Um, just like hello I'm just, I'm just so you guys know <laughs> well I'm an actress originally right there so um, so there's that and it was just uh, no I mean I liked her as like I knew she was a good person but that's right. as far as I could tell <laughs> Um, I don't anymore, um, but, and it's it just, I guess we had a lot in common as far as passion for art mm-hmm. and films and we just developed it. And then because we have different talents yes. and it's, it was, I guess, perfect enough to start something together, I guess. And then we balanced each other out. Of yeah. The energy wise. <laughs> so you guys all work together? Like on Often, right, very often. Well, yeah. yes, we work together and separately. Well, Felina but... showed every single film that we did. Oh, and so it looks, that's yeah. why it looks so amazing. <laughs> I mean, oh my gosh, I watched on Instagram, I Am Normal, which I really want to talk about. Yeah. So beautiful. Talk to me about the inspiration for writing this and, and where it all came from. It, it just looks so good. It's like right up my alley. I was like, I need to watch this. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so starting with my father, he's a psychotherapist in Russia, okay. well known. So I was always interested in psychology ever since I was a kid. And um, I saw a lot of mental patients, you know, in his work and I always felt bad for them. And I was like, this is a very serious matter that, you know, I just feel blessed that I don't have that. But I want people to understand how important it is to have a decent mental health. Yeah. Um, years later, you know, which was um, two and a half years ago or two years ago, my dad was here with my mom and we just, we came across the article, which was about the Rosenhan experiment. Then, and my dad knew about this experiment. I didn't. Which and I think is, oh my gosh. So yes, crazy. yes. Blew my mind. It was, uh, yeah. And we, uh, we discussed it and I was like, that's crazy and interesting. And I did some research and I realized nobody made a movie about it. I was like, well, Which is shocking to me. It is like there was some little short films, but not nothing really, you know, on that level. You know, I was like, I think it's fascinating and I want to do it. So a couple words about the experiment. It was 1973 and uh, David Rosenhan, who was a, um, a professor in Stanford, he um, he basically got eight volunteers just random people that are, that were very, like, completely healthy, you know, mentally stable and whatever. And they were supposed to go into different psych wards around the U.S. And... This uh, is a true story. Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. Rosenhan Experiment, 1973. It's tons of materials you can find about it. Um, so they were instructed to go into the mental wards and um, say certain things, like they've been hearing voices. And the idea was uh, to find out whether the doctors would be able to uh, understand that these people are healthy or not. Oh. So it was like a, a little trick. Right. Well, no, they were not able to determine that all of those patients were uh, admitted in the wards. They were they were forced to take medications and they were all diagnosed with schizophrenia and one of them with psychosis, I think. So, and then the story got even more interesting. The Those pseudo patients stayed inside the wards and then, you know, one by one, they, they got released. And uh, after all of them were out, it was a huge, you know, scandal in psychiatric right. world because Rosenhan... Um, did this article about being being sane in insane places, talking about the experiences of those people that were inside the wards and how patients are being treated and how, well, to start with, the doctors don't know who who's sane right. and who's it not. Insane. Right. Uh, and it was just like, it was, it was you know, it's really a lot. I'm not going to, you know, bother you with details. But I thought, again, it was a, a strong premise for, uh, for a film. And Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and um, so what Rosenhan also did, like after after the article was you know a huge scandal and it was out and uh, everything, they did some changes in the diagnosis system. So it's not only you know it was a, a an interesting subject I thought, but it was also something influential that later on you know changed certain things in yeah. um, in the psychiatric world. And um, and I came up with the idea, and um, you know I thought I should just write a, a short film and see how it goes. It was the first 
film that I've written. And you what know? did you ladies think when she came to you with the idea? Oh, wow. I mean, <laughs> I, I really loved it because I, I, I did my research on that too. And I saw there was actually an entire movement in the 70s that led to uh, the institutionalization of the hospitals, mm -hmm. of the psychic wards. And um, it, even though it changed the diagnostic system, they had to let a, uh, a lot of people with mental conditions on the street. And this is one of the reasons that we see lots of homeless people that cannot have a medical help, a right. me mental help, um, because of that, partially because of that movement. So they were fighting for one thing, <laughs> and, yeah. they, and they and got the opposite. Right, that's so crazy. So that's what attracted me to, to the idea. And what about you, Helena? Well, I love Orla's work, so it's like whatever she wants to do, <laughs> I'm going to tag along yeah. as long as I have time. You know, it's after if I have been shooting quite a lot. So, but but any 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 time she wants to do a project, I would like to to do it with her because she has. Uh, really great visual style and I really can relate to her aesthetics so I think that's why we clicked when we met the first time you know I, I love uh, stories and the aesthetically she sees the world and she can build the world yeah you know, and working with a director who who can concentrate on that and develop the characters that I would be interested in uh, watching myself and the story is fascinating to me oh my gosh and it looks so good the time period too you know but yeah. I convinced her to shoot it on film that was a big thing <laughs> because yeah, she's never so... done film before and yeah. it's a uh, yeah, I feel like it's um, it helps almost any director out there to to transition into shooting on that format because you become more disciplined and yeah, uh, you understand it better. You know how the process works. You know, yeah. and the actors too, they they know that they need to be on. Of course, mm -hmm. and yeah. you don't have a playback. You can right. see anything. Yeah. I know. So you just right. have to sort of trust what you're doing. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to talk to you ladies about being women in the film industry and what challenges that you face. I mean, you, you're from Russia and Ukraine, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So what challenges have you faced in the industry? Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not always easy for us. You know what I mean? No. So, you know, it, no, it was people wasn't... see you and you ladies are beautiful and you know that can sometimes work against you. Do you know what I'm saying? So I want to know like what it's been like for you. Um, I'll start with the good part. Yes. I mean, it's, it's changing and it's changing really quickly. And with all the programs that, uh, that support women right now, I feel that it's, it's like we have more chances for sure. Um, I just got into the Black Magic Future Directors program uh, just just for women. And then Disney Diversity Training program. Oh, that's and, great. And uh, Nalip, you probably know. It's, yeah. Um, so there's so many programs, so, many, so much support that I feel that the scenery is just changing quickly. Um, but before that, what I would say, I'd say, yeah, I did have like some situations at, <laughs> when I was, when I was sure. assisting or like working at the producing office where I thought um, that they don't treat me the same way right. as they treat men or, or maybe other people thought that they got the job because of my looks. Um, just that, you know, yeah. and I kind of, I didn't have personal, I didn't have feel and confident enough to go and pursue the same kind of project the men would pursue. Like I didn't have that until the last year, maybe yeah. when I like finally believed in myself and this entire movement started. Got it. What about you? Uh, well, oh, I just like girl get to me. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I agree with everything she just said and, um, for me, it was, it was, I guess, harder when I was an actress and model. Yeah. Yeah. It just being objectified all the time. And even though not necessarily completely Me Too stories, but it's just someone unpleasant just conversations the, right. and things and hints and looks and, um, and I hated it. And then I, when I was transitioning into the production world and creative side of it, mm -hmm. uh, because I was from another country and I'm, yeah, I'm sure I was, that plays you know, into things a little bit yeah. as well too. Yeah. So I'm from another country and I'm young and, you know, pretty. And so at first people didn't take me seriously. And, you know, when I, when I was, um, planning to do the first feature film, which, you know, I found financing for myself and, um, people were like, don't do it. You're going to fuck up. Excuse my French. Like, I'm know. like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> like, you can make film for like, you know, very low budget. I'm like, yes, I can. And so it was a lot of men that were telling me like, don't, you're not going to finish. You're going to, I'm like, 
I'll finish. So not only did I finish, it's out and, you know, yeah. but stuff like that. But I think that, uh, like Olya said, you know, it's, it's really changing rapidly and uh, it's going much better and there is a support and for, you know, female writers, producers, directors. And um, um, I, I can tell you that I like the direction where it's headed. Right. I absolutely like that. And I always, you know, uh, in fact, when I produce my stuff, um, it just happens that, you know, we have the uh, most of the uh, department heads that we work with are women, not just Olya and Helena, but our production designer, Yana. She's also from Russia. <laughs> Yana. <laughs> but I'm not playing favorites. They're the best. That's why I work with well, them. Yeah, I want to specify that because I worked with, you know, I also produce not just my own stuff, but I work as a line producer for like other people and I see different designers, different director photographers and I choose them not because they're my friends, but because they're the best. Right. So, um, and many other women that, you know, it's just, yeah, I'm very, uh, yeah, very supportive, um, of that community and I feel supported as well. What advice would you ladies give other women coming up in filmmaking right now? Like if someone who wants to start in filmmaking, what advice would you give them? Uh, well, go for it and, uh, stand your ground, know who you are, what you bring in, know your, you know, you can, you know, basically. Yeah. And, uh, the problem, I, I should probably mention that that's the only thing that I, uh, sometimes feel a little weird about is that some women, some women are not as good at supporting other women because they're jealous or whatever industry is like yeah it can be doggy dog i mean it just, it just yes can be. so i i unfortunately also had some experiences with that and i'm like well but that's just that just she has her personal issues and whatever it's just not my person and I'll, I'll move on right so i think it's very important to understand that all of us are very unique we all have our not just women but people we all have our strengths and there is a space for everybody right people sometimes don't understand it's like almost like if you get the job then i can't with that mentality, it's very, you know, it's not going to get limiting. you anywhere. It's yeah. very limiting. Exactly. So I think you should understand and have like a unlimited belief system where there's a space for everybody. Mindset of abundance. Yes. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah. and by helping, you know, by helping me, you'll help yourself. Exactly. And, and then it's just how it works well, for I me. I always tell people I believe in like a grand design and like what's whatever's meant for you is meant for you, right? That's it. That's it. You said it, yeah. Like I go on a date and I act like a crazy person and that guy calls me again. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it either works or it, it doesn't. Either work at the end of the day. <laughs> right. You can't say the wrong thing to the right guy. Write that down. Yeah. <laughs> yes. It's so... <laughs> So it's so true. Yes. Like, she's crazy, but I like her. Yes, <laughs> yes. Or you can pretend to be someone you're not. Or, I for that girl. matter, like, being a perfect woman or whatever. Yeah. But then what's going to happen? You know, it's just, you get, you know. Speaking of dating, what's the status here, ladies? What's going on? Are we it's a uh, TBD. Well, I'm she's married. <laughs> married. <laughs> like let's, let, 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 let's start with, yeah. Um, I'm single. Okay. I'm, you know, Question dating. Mark? Okay. It's well, it's too soon to tell. Oh, okay, yeah. we're <laughs> early stages. Oh yeah, single, single. All right, you guys. We will see you next time. Make sure you subscribe and hit that like button.